Hey everybody, Mort here. Uh, got some good feedback last time about the patch postmortem, so here we are again with the patch 1015 postmortem. Uh, as always, this is a look back since hindsight is 2020 and see how we did on the patch notes, what went right, what went wrong, um, and so we can learn from that as we move forward into the next patch. Uh, so with patch 1015, obviously we were coming out of a rough 1013 and 1014, so our goal was to hopefully get the meta in a better spot. Uh, and so far that has been successful from what we've seen. Uh, we're seeing a lot of diverse comps. Um, we're seeing, you know, tier lists with 11 to 18 comps on them, uh, which is good. Uh, not going to say it's perfect. Astro Sniper seems a little strong. Um, Celeste, or excuse me, uh, Chrono is still basically not a real comp. Space Pirate's still a little weak. Um, so still some work to do for sure, but seems like we got into a good spot. So let's go over each individual change. Uh, the new galaxy, Plunder Planet. Uh, this galaxy so far, I would say, is uneventful, but going well. Uh, it doesn't really change your game plan that much, other than, you know, maybe be push aggression, push aggression. Um, but so far, the system seems to be working. It's not heavy snowball that heavily. It's more like everyone just gets more gold. It has been interesting to see some of the screenshots of people, like, level 8 at 3-3. Three, three. Um, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, I'd call this an, an okay galaxy. Um, Nikoverse being removed, that I think was great. Um, Nikoverse was starting to get pretty solved. Uh, Bard became basically the S tier, um, you know, using it on Jin, Teemo, things like that pretty early. Um, so yeah, Nikoverse was kind of getting solved, so I'm kind of glad to see that go to rest for now. Uh, and then the Galactic Armory adjustment. Uh, so far, the reaction to this seems to be very positive. Um, so pretty happy with how this one turned out. Uh, it's interesting because some games you still feel like, wow, everyone has the components for red buff, but I'm not necessarily locked into red buff. Now I can maybe build, you know, a War Mogs and go Jarvan, use that armor for a Bramble, things like that. So it seems to have been opening up strategic diversity, which I think bodes well for some of the changes coming up in set four to things like the carousel. Um, so yeah, I think that was a very good change. Okay, uh, Celestial. We nerfed the two-piece from 20 to 15. Uh, this change, I think, was massive. Um, I think this was a good change. I think it was way too easy for certain comps to just get to Celestial for free, and 20% healing on your entire team is a lot of power. Um, so definitely was happy to see this get shipped. Um, Four Celestial is still interesting, but yeah, this, this was just a good change and has so far worked. Uh, Graves, we increased the blind duration one second at every level. Now there was a concern because this is what it used to be and obviously we had to nerf it. Um, so putting it back, wasn't this just, just going to make Graves the best early game in the game? Uh, and the answer is no, it seems to have actually put Graves in a healthy spot where he's good, uh, he's definitely countering certain comps like Jin comps and Zaya comps. Um, but, you know, it's also opened up some new compositions. For example, the reroll uh, battle cast comp that uses a Graves 3. Um, so yeah, this, this change has worked out pretty well. Uh, Jarvan, nerfing the attack speed of the uh, bonus standard. This was also a very good change. Uh, we're still seeing a lot of protectors. Jarvan Warmogs is still good as a tank. Um, you know, so giving the best front line in the game, also giving your team a bunch of bonus attack speed wasn't necessarily healthy, uh, so this has worked out. Again, directionally, this just seems like the right change. Protectors are still very tanky. Right now, protectors are still sort of the best tank you can get. It's like protector, slightly better than Vanguard, both way better than Brawler right now. Um, so yeah, this worked out. Uh, Darius, we gave him 50 more health and lowered his mana 10 to give him more attempts at his spell. Uh, this is a change that I'm glad we did, but clearly still has not hit the goal of making Darius an exciting champ to use. And the unfortunate reality is I think we're in a position with Darius where in order to make him really good, we'd have to do some pretty big changes. Um, Right now, he almost requires QS because of the amount of CC going on between all the Nikos, Rakans, Nautiluses, things like that. He's just too easy to counter. Uh, his spell fails way too often. So what you'd have to do, likely, is give him a bunch of base AP so that that wasn't true anymore and you could run more defensive items. 
Uh, but doing that also puts him in a situation where then it's too easy to get him into that repeatability state. Uh, so this is a champion where I think, looking back, it's like the difference between the best case scenario and the worst case scenario is just too wide. Um, which is a shame because he's such a fun champion. I'd love to do even more work to get him more playable. Um, but yeah, it's just the, the current state of the game, I'm just not sure that's going to happen. Okay, Lucian. <laughs> this one's funny because this is a big buff to Lucian. Uh, one less auto attack per spell cast. Uh, blue buff makes him single auto, uh, which is big. Uh, and his three star went up pretty significantly. Uh, now, we saw at 750 when we were testing it on PBE, uh, he was insane. Three-star Lucian was like a big win condition. Uh, at 550, this hasn't actually changed much at all. Uh, we don't really see people running blue buff Lucian. We don't see people itemizing Lucian that much, more than the red buff they already were, probably. Uh, so this was a safe change, but also didn't really move the needle, uh, which is a bit of a shame. So... Uh, one of the things I'll call out is like, again, we tried 750, that was insane. 550 didn't move the needle. Um, so maybe I pulled back too hard on the PBE when we went down and maybe something like 600, 625, 650 would have been better. Uh, Recon health, minus 50. This was just a good change. Again, protectors are still the top tier frontline right now. So bringing them down a bit was healthy. Um, Recon being actually the better between Recon and Zin right now. This brought Rakan down a bit. We are seeing more Zin play now, which is good. Um, so yeah, this is good. Uh, Ash starting Mana down by 10. I think this is a good example of like the lightest touch possible. A single auto attack before she hits that Shojin state. Uh, and I think it was good because we went light. And what we're seeing now is like Ash is starting to kind of go out of the meta. Um, now, whether or not that was this change or the meta shifting, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. But... This was a safe change where we nudged her a bit and got the meta in a better spot. So pretty happy with this one. Uh, Master Yi, uh, the 20 armor and 15 magic resist. This change, again, like this was one of the ones I thought, I think people were predicting might need a hot fix because it's like, oh, six blade master is going to be insane. Um, and I don't think it actually did much. Like it is still what it is. Six blade master is a very good comp right now. It's a very hit or miss comp. If you hit that three-star Master Yi, still, nothing changed here. It's really good, and if you don't, it's a little rough. Um, so I'm glad we did this change. I wonder if it still needs more, but I think the harder thing here is, like, we need to make two-star Yi better and three-star Yi worse. And with our current levers, I'm not sure that's possible. Um, so yeah, Yi is in an interesting position. It's nice that the six Blade Master comp is back, uh, but, yeah. The, overall, this change was fine, though. Uh, Nico, starting mana 10 and uh, base mana 10 up so that she casts less often. This is just, again, great change. Brought protectors down. Nico is still, like, the S-tier frontliner at 3 cost, which is good. She provides so much CC. Uh, if you can 3-star Nico, that is, like, the best champ in the game right now. Like, 3-star Nico and 3-star Yi are both comparable win rates. They're actually pretty insane. Uh, so again, very glad we did this nerf. Now, maybe the question is, did we go hard enough? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe 4120 is the answer, or, you know, 5125. Um, but overall, glad we made this change. Seems pretty good. Uh, Vayne getting back 5 AD seems to have bumped up Cybers in a good way. This seems pretty comfortable. Cybers are a good comp. They're not auto win. This seemed like a really good change, um, which again was sort of correcting a past mistake, but this one has worked out and we're seeing it kind of work out exactly as we wanted now, which is like, you can play Vayne in the mid game, but if you itemize Vayne, it'll fall off. You need Aurelia. Now, the thing I'll say is Aurelia is the, the bigger project here because she's still probably too inconsistent without an infiltrator spatula, um, but overall Vayne, good spot. Okay, Jin. We nerfed the fourth shot damage at level one, like an insignificant amount. And at level two, a pretty big amount from 500 to 444. This change was good. Clearly, Jin was strong and we needed to bring him down. Uh, this is where, though, I look and I go, we didn't do enough. 
Uh, Static had kind of correctly called out that the attack speed should probably also go down, uh, but we were nervous about sort of overcorrecting. So we wanted to do a single change. Uh, and where we've seen in the meta is like, Jin is still kind of the S tier carry. Jin, Teemo, that Astro Sniper comp. Um, so I kind of wish we went harder here. Would have been nice. Um, but directionally still the right call. And again, with where we were playing it safe uh, was probably the right call here. Uh, Jinx attack speed went up once you activate her. So you needed that first kill by 5% at 2 and 25% at 3. Uh, it's funny, this is a change I would actually call a bad change. Directionally it is correct, Jinx needs buffs. Uh, but we were so nervous about bringing back Jinx after she just kind of gone down. And certainly from the outside perspective, I can see the Jinx nerf, buff, nerf, buff, nerf, buff being very frustrating. Uh, but Jinx has so many levers built into her. Base attack speed, base AD, base health, bonus attack speed on kill, rocket damage. Um, and each of those levers kind of has to be in just the right spot, right? If base AD or base attack speed is too high, it's too easy to activate. If rocket damage is too high, once you activate, it's auto win. You know, and so she's been a, t a very difficult champion to balance because of that fact. And this change was like basically a non-change. 5% attack speed at 2 star is basically nothing. The patch notes would have been cleaner had we not shipped this. So we probably should have committed to a bigger change to try to bump her up, which that's what the current data says is that Jinx is slightly underperforming, only slightly. Um, but, or we should have just done nothing. This was kind of bloating the patch notes. Uh, Soraka, minus 50 healing at 1 and 2 star. Good change. Soraka's still really good, but now we're actually seeing people prefer Lulu over Soraka, which is good. That's what we want. Um, so yeah, I think Soraka's finally in a good space where she's still a good champion. She's just not quite as oppressive. Uh, still maybe a little too good, but like pins and needle, like just, we're pretty close here. Uh, Victor, 10 mana. This change worked out really well. We're seeing Victor in the meta now. It's good. Uh, 10 mana makes a big difference. Um, really happy with this change. Debated pretty heavily between the mana and the damage. Uh, and credit to some of the players I talked to, Salvi specifically, uh, kind of went back and forth on this and ended up on the mana. And so, yeah, that was definitely the right call. Pretty happy with that. Uh, Janna, 10 off the mana. Kind of like the Ash thing. I think this was safe. Jan is still a powerful caster you want in every comp, uh, comps that matter. Paragon is still insane, um, but nudges her down in power just a bit. Uh, so this is good. Uh, Zareth. <laughs> this is one Saint Vicious and I have been arguing about quite a bit. Um, but if you look at the data right now, Zareth is definitely underperforming now. Now, does that mean this nerf was wrong? Mm, probably. Probably. Um, looking back, it was interesting because Zareth is doing well in a Dark Star comp. The issue with Zareth right now is that he just requires too much to get going. You need him two star, you need a Ginsu's, you need a QSS, and you need a Karma and or Janna to get him going. Um, all of those things, once you have all of those things, he's insane. Um, so it begs the question is like, is this a flawed design? Because like, we have a five cost that unlike say Aurelian Soul and Echo, you don't plug and play in any comp. You basically only play in that specific comp. And when you do, it's really good. Um, but if you don't, it's not very good at all. In fact, typically if you're, let's say you're running Brawler Blaster and you see a Zareth in your shop, like you ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole. You playing Brawler Blaster, see an Echo in your shop, you're like, maybe. Um, so yeah, I guess looking back, if I if I were to do it again, It'd probably be easier to just not do the nerf, that's for sure. Or just the starting mana nerf, but man, the starting mana nerf is just so hard. The other direction we could have taken it would have been to make Zareth slightly more reliable, but less bang for the buck when he casts. So that would have been don't touch any of these levers, possibly even buff the starting mana, but turn down the base damage on the spell. Um, you could even remove, yeah. Zeris is a tricky one, though. The idea we went with was he's a glass cannon, and if you can get him going, it's amazing. Um, but maybe that's just not correct for TFT. And so 
something to think about with future five costs. Uh, beyond that, bug fixes, which bug fixes are good, you know, sweet. So yeah, that's the patch. Um, as far as things that were missing, um, let's see here. Bard certainly kicked up in the meta. Um, I think I would I wish we would have hit something on Bard. We knew Bard was already looking strong, and as people figured it out and it got more well known, early Bards are certainly warping the meta pretty heavily. Um, Timo. Timo's another tricky one because like without really touching him, he's kind of gone from bad to good to great. So you know something in that Timo space, uh, and then Gangplank. Gangplank was something that we didn't touch this patch because we were already touching a lot, but we kind of knew needed to be touched anyway, and sure enough, like, Gangplank is just the worst 5 cost right now. Basically only playable on Dwarf Planet, so those are things I that weren't in the patch notes that I think we'd hit. Uh, but overall, you can't argue with the results, right? Like, the patch seems to have ended up in a good spot, um, so hopefully 1016 can keep moving that further in the right direction. We're definitely going to be trying to aim for stability as well, uh, because this will be the first set where we have some big, you know, competitions coming up with all the qu regional qualifiers and then the world finals. Um, so we don't want to be just like shaking up the meta very much. So expect to see future patches be light touches on the balance um, just to try to nudge things in the right direction because we're so close. We're so close. So, all right, that's going to do it for this postmortem. Hopefully you enjoyed. As always, give me feedback if you want to see anything change or something I missed. Um, otherwise, that's going to do it for now. As always, keep enjoying TFT. Take it easy.